38 years ago, June the 3rd, 1983. Many of you weren't even born yet. The Officer and a Gentleman was the, the number one film that summer. As a recent graduate of the class of 83 Strongsville High School, I departed two days after high school graduation for Paris Island, South Carolina. I had enlisted to become a United States Marine and I was headed off to boot camp. 17 years old and clueless of what I was about to experience in the Marine Corps. I remember after graduating from boot camp, coming back home and being with my friends and family, but soon after I headed off to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. It was time for my MOS school, in other words, Military Occupational Specialty School. I was there for several months, but one day will stand out in my mind forever. It was Sunday, October 23rd, 1983. I had just barely turned 18 years of age. And the chaplain came in and told us that in Beirut, Lebanon, a truck bomb had run past the security gate and had destroyed one of our United States Marine Corps barracks. More than 200 of my fellow Marines died that day. And quickly they began to mobilize us for war. I wasn't sure what to expect. I was 18 years old, I had enlisted in the Marine Corps, but now potentially I was headed off to a foreign country to fight. Over the years, two of my buddies that I joined the Marine Corps with, Ron Kowalczyk and Mark Hudson, we went in on what's called the, the buddy system. Three young dudes from Strongsville, Ohio. And now, one remains alive. I remember and I reflect often on my friend Ron and, and Mark, their lives as Marines and no longer here on this earth. You see, this Memorial Park, you can travel all across these United States. The tapestry, the, 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 the different small towns, the county seats where memorials have been risen up to help us, to remind us of men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice, their lives. They, they stepped into a battlefield. They purchased freedom so that we could walk free in our country. Some today are concerned. They think that perhaps potentially that our freedoms have become in doubt. This worldwide pandemic, this global event that has caused medical fear and politicians who have leaned in and decided to limit those freedoms. I don't know the answers to all of those political decisions, but I do know this, that even in this pandemic situation, even in this world that's marked by a, a COVID virus, you and I, we can still pause on this day in May 2020 and remember, remember the price that was given so that men and women who fought and who gave their lives for the ultimate so that we could have freedom I've, I've thought as I've come here in Ocala and sat in this park and reflected, I often will go from bench to bench and think about the family, to think about the loved one. I'll walk on the perimeter and I'll see the different battles and the different wars. Then there's a brick. It might look like an ordinary brick, but that brick has the name of a service member. Some from the United States Marine Corps, others from the Army and the Navy, and the Coast Guard and the Air Force. Men and women who leaned in to give us the freedoms that we've so enjoyed. And I can't help but to reflect. 
I mean, yes, I'm a citizen of these United States of America, but as we've learned in our Bible studies that we're also a citizen of heaven. We, we, we were redeemed here on earth, but not for earth. We were redeemed for heaven. And it reminds me, as I reflect and think about the physical world, the men and women who gave their lives so that we could have freedom, it reminds me of the scriptures. It reminds me from Genesis to Exodus to Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all throughout the prophets, all throughout the poetic books, all throughout the gospels, all throughout the, the Paul, you know, Paul writing to the churches of this story of freedom that God wanted you and I not to live in bondage, but freedom. There's a piece, maybe you would like to turn in your Bible, Joshua chapter 24. This man, Joshua, is coming to the very end of his life. He's reflecting. Much like we, on this Memorial Day weekend, are reflecting. We're remembering. Maybe it's somebody in your family that fought in the war and gave their life for your freedom. Maybe it's a visit to the Memorial Park or maybe to drive down to Bushnell and to go to the, the Florida National Cemetery and just walk through and to show your respect. Joshua in chapter 24 is doing the same thing. Listen to what the Bible says beginning in verse 26. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Well, what did he record? He recorded the different battles. Like our memorial park here in Ocala, it's a permanent recording of the battles that we have here in our country so that we're free. The exodus from Egypt, crossing of the Red Sea, crossing the Jordan, the battle of Jericho, the battle against the, the Canaanites and the Jebusites and the Moabites all along the way, the battles where God gave the Israelites victory and secured their freedom. Then listen to this. Then he took a large stone. After he's writing all the different uh, memorial moments, he takes this stone, this physical stone, and he sets it up. He took this large stone, this memorial, and he set it up under an oak tree near the holy place of the Lord. In verse 27, see, he said to all the people, see, look at this, pause, pause. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words of the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Here in Memorial Park, all of these stones are a witness, a witness of men and women who paid, who sacrificed their lives so that we could have our freedom, that we could lean in and be, friend, be free in all that we do. It's a witness. And so the question as an American citizen, how, how am I retelling this story? How am I living out this story? See, not only our country understands our, ten our tendency, our propensity to forget, and we do, right? We, we forget. But God knows we have a tendency, a propensity to forget. So he wants us to remember. Over and over, Joshua would set up these memorials. When they crossed over the Jordan, they took 12 stones out of the, the river, out from the middle, and they set it up on the other side. And Joshua, listen to this in Joshua chapter four. Joshua set up at Gilgal the 12 stones that he had taken out of Jordan. He said to the Israelites, in the future, when your descendants ask their parents, what do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you crossed over it. In other words, he said, listen, tell the people, set this up, tell the people, show your children how God has showed up and provided freedom. I, I suggest, I recommend, wherever you're watching today, tomorrow on Memorial Day, I, I know it's a time for, for picnics and barbecues and it's a day off from work, even in this pandemic season, but find a memorial in your town and take your children and remind them that the freedoms that they have the freedoms we have as Americans, they were purchased from another. That's also true spiritually. 
on a daily basis reminding your children that we, we have our freedom as Christ followers in a gift that's given to us from God. You, you see, the Bible tells us clearly that it's a story. From Genesis to Revelation, it's a story. When Joshua began to unpack for the Israelites, it was a story of when they went to Jericho and how they conquered the, the, the walls of Jericho. It was a story. There's something about stories that invite us to lean in to the story. Here, let me just see if I can give you a little quiz. Right now, I want you to think back to your, your school days. What was your favorite mathematical equation? <laughs> yeah, so you didn't remember those? I would ask you to drop a comment in the box, but most of us, right, we were so glad to get out of math. We're so glad to walk away from advanced math and geography, or geography, right? Some of us, we, we were in geometry, but we thought it was geography, right? Um, I'm from all those things, right? How about all the different parts of speeches, right? The, you know, is it an adverb? Is it an adjective? Is it a noun? Is it a pronoun? Remember all the things, remember all the dates, you know, the random dates from history class that you had to remember all the different names? how hard it is to remember that? Now, let me ask you this. How about your favorite story? Favorite story movie of all time? Not too difficult, right? Matter of fact, right now, just, just drop the name of your favorite story in the comments. Just, just drop it. I can tell you, for me, uh, one of my favorite stories is The Toy Story. I absolutely love it. All, all four parts, right? I love the, the human dimension of Woody. Trying to figure out who he is and Buzz Lightyear comes to the story and Woody who once was like the favorite toy of Andy but now there's Buzz Lightyear, right? Here, drop a comment. What is your favorite story? You know, I've been thinking, one of my favorite movies from days gone by was Hello, Top Gun, Tom Cruise. And did you hear? The sequel is supposed to come out this summer. I'm wondering, how is that going to happen, right? Are we going back to movie theaters, or are they going to release it to us to watch in our homes? There's something about that story. I want you to drop right now. What is your favorite all-time story? It can even be a Christmas story. Can you say Elf? <laughs> that one part in the movie, right, when Buddy, and they're talking about Santa, and Santa's coming, and Buddy says, I know Santa. Right? I, you know what I love about that scene? Is it's, it's so authentic. Buddy really knew Santa. I think about that in my relationship with Jesus and people talk about God and Jesus. I wanna pipe up and say, I know Jesus, right? You're dropping comments right now. What is your favorite all time story? Now, isn't it remarkable? That story's lodged in your mind. That mathematical equation, it's been lost in time, right? Understanding all the different parts of vocabulary and speech and all of that. Listen, you were so glad to get out of school. And as a parent, you struggle trying to get your kids to know all those things. But stories, those stories, they are lodged in our minds. The power of story. Do you understand this, this book? Th th this book isn't some mathematical equation. It's not some parts of speech from grammar class. This book is a story of how God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son and he wants you and me and all of us to become adopted into his family. See, that's what memorials do. Memorials tell us a story. There's a story to know as you walk through the Memorial Park here in Ocala. There's a story to know about men and women in different times and seasons in our country. As you go through the scriptures, there's stories to know the story of Esther who risked everything and she walked in to risk her life so that others could have freedom. The story of Daniel who wasn't afraid to pray publicly and he was thrown into a lion's den and how God showed up and gave Daniel victory over those hungry lions. There's a story of Peter who initially was, was bold and proud to be a follower of Jesus but then the pressure came on. 
and he didn't show up the way that he thought he should have showed up. He would have showed up. And in his discouragement and his despair and his depression, God restored him. I'm just telling you, the Bible is filled with stories for us to know. These memorials are stories for us to lean in. These memorials are stories for us to live. See, memorials invite us to become a part of the story. Memorials are kept alive by the way you and I live. Let me tell you something about all the memorials. They're not ashamed. They stand tall. They point to the sky. and They want everybody to know these people fought. These people leaned in and sacrificed their lives so that we could have freedom. But I think that's true spiritually as well. Listen to Romans chapter 1 and 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and the Gentile. See, as Christ followers, we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power source in which we live. See, freedom, it was purchased by another. But freedom, it's preserved by you and me. These memorials tell the story of how somebody else purchased your freedom and the way you and I choose to live as free men and women in the United States, that preserves their purchase. That's also true spiritually. Jesus purchased our freedom. Jesus, who was innocent, came and sacrificed his life. He died on the cross. He was buried, and three days later, he became alive again. Nobody can refute it. You might not believe it, but it doesn't mean that it's not true. Our freedom spiritually was purchased by Jesus Christ. But that freedom, it's proclaimed every day as you and I choose to live it day in and day out. See, all these memorials, they require action. They require you and I to lean in. They require us to live out the story. That's true in our relationship with Jesus. On this Memorial Day, there's not a, a, a better day that I can think of. I, I know we often look to Christmas Eve for communion. We, we think about around Easter time having communion. But on this Memorial Day weekend, I can't think of a better day for you and I to have communion. Now you already have some of the communion supplies there with you. But as we lean into this, understand, communion, it's more than having a little piece of bread or cracker. It's more than having some juice. This is you and I remembering. This is you and I memorializing Christ, who he is, how he lived, what he did for us. See, our salvation was purchased by him. Our salvation is free, but our spiritual development, it requires you and I every day to show up, to remember, and to live out. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, li listen to this, in verse 17, in the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. That's a hard statement. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth and he's saying, your gatherings, they do more harm than they do good. In the first place, I hear it. When you come together as a church, there's divisions amongst you. And to some extent, I believe it. Listen, division, division in your own mind makes you unstable. The Bible says uh, a, a divided man is unstable in all of his ways. Division in your marriage, when you're not on the same page. Division as a family. A division as a country. When we as a country are split down the middle, and one side believes one thing and another side believes another thing, there's no success, there's no moving forward. That's a biblical principle that nobody can escape. Unity is not uniformity. God's never called us to be unified, quite frankly. The Bible tells us just the opposite, that the body of Christ, there are many different parts, and all the parts work together for the glory of God. But we are called to be unified. You know, on this Memorial Day weekend, we're not unified because we're a red state or a blue state. We're not unified because we vote a particular way. 
We're unified because men and women, many of whom we will never know, they paid a price so that we could have our freedoms. As Christ followers, we're unified not because of us sitting under the steeple or sitting in our living rooms. We're unified not because of a certain denomination or a certain Bible that we read. We're unified because of the story of Jesus, that he died for you and he died for me. And so this thing of division, it's true today in 2020, and it was true when the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. And there's one solution to bring unity in our lives. It's to focus on Jesus, to focus on who Jesus is, and what he did, and his plans for our lives. Notice what the Bible says. When they came together that night, the night that the Lord Jesus was to be betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance, just like we remember the men and women who gave their lives for our freedom as United States citizens. Communion is that time where we remember that Jesus' body was broken for us. The Bible says in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you proclaim, you memorialize, you declare, you're stepping in and you're living out. See, Jesus provided our freedom, but we preserve it when we remember and we live out his salvation in our lives. Now, before we lean into communion, I want you to hear these verses in verse 27. So then, whoever eats of this bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. This is why many amongst you are weak and a number of you have fallen asleep. You see, this is the time when we examine ourselves. How are you doing spiritually? Are you going through the motions? Are you gliding through? The Bible says as a Christ follower, there are times when we get off the path. The Bible says you can confess that and he'll forgive you. So right now, as a Christ follower, you've already become a believer in Jesus. As you're getting the, the, the cracker or the bread or the juice together in your house, Ask the Holy Spirit this. I want you to do this. Holy Spirit, reveal anything inside of me. I'm examining my heart. Tell me, is there anything? And if he tells you, well, you got this thing of bitterness, or you've been withholding this, you haven't been trusting God in your finances, you've been afraid of this pandemic, right? You've been watching CNN more than you've been reading your Bible. Whatever he tells you, just fess it up. The Bible says that he's faithful and just to forgive us. Let's lean into this communion close to the Father's heart and clean from the world. And then let me offer an invitation. If you've never begun a relationship with Jesus, before we take the bread or take a piece of cracker, before we drink of the juice, that's not what saves you. That's a memorial. The memorials in this park, they stand as a testimony of the story of a man or a woman who gave their life. Communion stands as a memorial of the story of Jesus who gave his life. Would you like to believe in Christ today? Would you like to accept Christ as your savior? Right where you are, will you pray with me? Hey God, it's me. Right now, on this Memorial Day weekend, I believe that you died for me that you sacrificed your body, your life, so that I could be free from my sin. I've sinned, I admit that to you. And today, Jesus, because you came alive again, I'm asking you to come alive in my life. Save me. I want to live for you. And to those of you who are just praying with me, would you just drop me a comment right now? Mark, today I made a decision for Jesus. Today I've committed my life to Christ. And let me just say, I am so glad that you and I have moved from beyond just being friends, but now we are family. 
We are adopted brothers and sisters in the family of God. And now, as a believer in Christ, you can lean in to this time of communion. And it's not just going through the motions. It's you declaring what you just prayed and believed in Jesus. So you got your supplies together. I've got a little bit of juice here with me. I've got a small cracker. And the Bible was really clear. And it said that that night that he was betrayed, he had, he had given thanks. And so right now, would you just pray with me? I want to give thanks. God, I thank you for your son, Jesus, and for the sacrifice that he gave on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. God, help us to preserve the story of the cross by the way we live at work, at home, our neighborhoods, and our campuses, and all that we do and say, we do it for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. In the same manner that night, they took the cup. We know biologically the life of the flesh is in the blood. If your blood becomes sick, you no longer live. Jesus poured out his blood. Now this is just juice, but it's a memorial. It's much like Memorial Park. It reminds us of the blood that was shed on blood, by, battlefields. They poured out their life so that we could have life here in America. Likewise, Christ poured out his life so that we could have spiritual life. And so he said, drink this in remembrance of me. This has been special. Being in this Memorial Park as United States citizens has been very special today. I so encourage you to go with your family. Walk in Memorial Park if you're here in Ocala. Find a spot where you live and remember physically. But I also encourage you during this weekend, continue to reflect on who Christ is. Let's make sure that Romans chapter 1 stands as a living memorial for all of our lives. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone. Let's live our lives not ashamed, but publicly proclaiming. Let me leave you with a question, something to really struggle with, to wrestle with. Talk about it in your small groups. Talk about it as a family. Are you ready? Your life. If the world were to know only through your life, the story of the Jesus, would the world know. Did you get that? In other words, these memorials tell the story of a war on a battlefield someplace else. And the way that we know something happened on a different uh, continent is these memorials. If your life, if the only way people would ever know about Jesus is your life, what story would they know about Jesus? I think it's time we start living our lives as a memorial so everybody knows about Jesus. And do you know that in this season, although we can't gather in person, while well, we're online, that you're a digital ambassador for Jesus. Let me ask you a pointed question. Who have you shared the link, our YouTube link with? Who have you shared um, hopeinocala.com link with? You understand the good news that you're hearing, that you're consuming, it's not just meant for you. It's meant to be shared out across all of our social platforms. Just like when we meet in person, we invite people to come and to hear. We partner with people to discover the hope in Jesus Christ. Right now, while we're online, we are digital evangelists, virtual ambassadors, sharing the good news all across the world. I encourage you this week, every single day, push out invitations, invite people to come and discover that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Let me pray. God, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for the book of Joshua that showed us how the Israelites took time to build up memorials to remind the generations of the good work that you've done. I'm thankful for all the men and women who've given their lives so that we could have freedom, 
Help us as Americans on this Memorial Day weekend to remember, to reflect, to be grateful, to continue the stories of men and women who gave their lives for our freedom. But then I ask God most of all, that you'd help us as Christ followers, not to be ashamed, but to let our lives stand tall as memorials, pointing people to the hope that we have in the story of Jesus and the hope that every man and every woman can have, that no matter what we face in the middle of a world pandemic, that we can have hope in the story of Jesus Christ. I sure do love you. I pray everything in that name, in the name of Jesus. Peace.